Welcome everyone. This is Colleen McCarthy O'Toole from the Cure SMA Family Support Department. Thank you so much for joining us today. We would also like to thank our national presenting sponsors, Biogen, Genentech, and Novartis Gene Therapies, as well as our platinum sponsor, ScholarRock, for their generous support of the Summit of Strength virtual webinar series. We appreciate all of the questions that we received in advance of this webinar, and we'll try to answer many of these during today's presentation. You will also be able to submit questions throughout the webinar using the chat box, which you will find located in your GoToWebinar toolbox. Please note that all lines will remain muted during this webinar other than for speakers. We would like to point out that one feature on today's webinar, as our presenter will be using a live webcam for part of her presentation. When her live webcam is shared, you will be able to use the arrows on your personal webinar screen to enlarge your video of her demonstrations. If you have any additional questions after the presentation, please contact the CureSMA Family Support Team at familysupport at curesma.org. Now we would like to welcome our speaker, Anne buckley reen who will be presenting on yoga therapy for children with SMA. Anne? Hi, welcome everybody. We're going to do this in two parts, just a little intro. Um, so first I want you, the, the adults, the parents, to prepare yourself I'm going to begin to talk a little bit about yoga, but I want you to just take a deep breath and let's let everything go. Let's just spend the next few moments together discussing yoga and then practicing it ourselves and with our kids who have more mobility. Yoga can be done anywhere. I do yoga with my clients in their beds, in their wheelchairs, or on a mat on the floor. It can be done at any time. I love to begin the day with yoga. And many of my pediatric clients, we begin the day getting our bodies, our brains, and our energy levels optimal for the rest of the day. Parents and students notice a difference when we start our day with yoga. So our small little practice that we're doing today is a great way to begin the day. It's great to take a break during the day. And I'm going to teach you the five parts of yoga. So any of these parts can be done as a break to just re-energize the body, to give a much needed stretch or break. And then again at bedtime to help soothe the body and prepare for sleep. So let's move on, Kat. So why yoga? Yoga has been around for 6,000 years. It began in India and the high priests and scholars in India did yoga. Um, a, their practice of yoga to prepare their minds and bodies for optimal learning, for optimal performance. So really, it is a very holistic approach that helps with wellness of the mind, the body, and the spirit, so the energy of the body. Go forward. So there are five parts of yoga practice. and, and Yoga practices have lineages, kind of like um, how Italian families have the sauce recipe. Well, in yoga, there are different lineages, and each lineage may have different parts of their practice. The end result is typically the same. So traditional yoga, this is a five-part preparatory program. It includes breathing exercises, a series of postures, relaxation exercises afterwards to integrate the effects of what we've done, and a back and forth circle of song, which is also known as chanting, followed by a meditation. So we're gonna talk a little bit about each of these parts. Kat, if you would go forward. So preparing for yoga. Um, first things first, if we are helping a child with yoga, it is very important that we be in a calm state. That may mean that we put on some soothing music in the background. You can Google yoga music on YouTube and find something to play in the background. Close your eyes for a moment. Focus on your own breathing and let everything else go. You wanna be 100% present to help your child doing their yoga practice, okay? If you are going to be handling your child and helping to support your child in their practice, it's really important that you be calm. It doesn't feel good to be handled by somebody who is trying to rush through it or who feels nervous. So just be calm and we're going to be very, very gentle in our practice. 
Okay. Um, the next thing is, is you want to be in an environment that's quiet. So doing your yoga practice in the living room where there might be lots of people around and talking, you want to perhaps go into the bedroom, close the door, hang a sign on the door, please do not disturb, we're doing our yoga. Okay? It's, it's really important that there be external peace in order for the internal peace that we're working on. Um, and then you may want to have a blanket or a firm pillow or a bolster um, that you can utilize for props. And we'll talk about those when we do our second, our second practice this morning. So Kat, let's move on. All right, so to begin our practice, we want to prepare our child with a little warm-up massage. So I find that the children that I work with love a hand massage, so we can open up the fingers. You can do this with me and take your thumb, and we're just going to do some small circles, nice deep pressure on the palm of the hand. So round and round. And then let's go down each finger individually. Nice deep pressure, sandwiching the fingers between your fingers. And again, round and round on the palm of the hand. Let's do that to the other side. So massage the palm and the arches of the hand. And then each finger individually with deep pressure all the way down to the fingertips. Getting that circulation going, opening up the hand. Okay, next slide, please. So the next thing that we're going to do in our practice is a sound breath. And there are many different ways to do this. Today, our sound breath will be um, vowel sounds. So we'll do the sound of ah and the sound of e. So I'll give you a quick demo right now. Take a deep breath in. And as you breathe out, you go ah. As, as for as long as you're able to do the exhalation, extended exhalation vibrating the lungs. If you are not able to make the vowel sound, you can close your mouth and you can hum. Mm. And what posture supported breathing means is, is that when we, if we reach our arms up, we naturally breathe in. If we fold forward, we naturally breathe out. So posture-supported breathing can mean that we help our child to move forward on the breath out to expel more air, to deepen the breathing. Let's move on to our next slide. So there are lots and lots of breathing exercises. In fact, in yoga, there are over 200 breathing exercises. So we're just going to keep it really simple today, focusing on our sound breath and perhaps a little posture supported breathing. There are postures that open up our chest and you're going to see later there are postures that also support all the, the supportive breathing muscles on the side of our body. So we're going to be incorporating some of those into our movement practice this morning. And then we'll conclude with our circle of song. Singing vibrates the lungs. It's one of the best lung exercises there is. If you can't sing or if you've got if you, if you have are nonverbal, making sounds with your mouth closed and humming mm, is a great way to do it. And on the right hand side, we typically sing for peace, joy, love, and light, or we sing younger kids, we sing their names, the names of everybody in the family. So you'll learn this thing along and you'll engage in the circle of song with me. Okay? Let's see our next slide. So now we're going to actually do our little practice, okay? So let's get on your mat, get on the floor, and we'll begin by taking a deep breath, closing our eyes, focusing inward. This first practice is a practice for children who have the physical ability to engage in the motor postures on their own or with minimal assistance from a parent. The second practice that we're going to do is for our children who may need more assistance. Okay? So, grown-ups and children, let's just close our eyes for a moment, focus on our breathing. Think of a positive word. 
and then open your eyes. And let's start with a little hand massage, like I just showed you, circling round and round on our palms, down each finger. down our thumb and over to the other hand down each finger and off the thumb we can do the same to the soles of the feet so the arch of the foot is a great place to massage with a slow circular massage you can use your thumb to do this with some nice big circles on the foot and then we'll do our other foot. So again, circles on the arches of the foot, round and round. Now some children love the tapping warm-up. And the tapping warm-up is when we just tap the outside of the legs all the way down to the feet and back up. So tap, tap, tap. We can tap the child back and then up and down the arm. So this helps with circulation, getting the oxygenated blood flowing. It's a great little warm up, increases your sensory awareness of your body. Okay. So from here, we'll do our sound breath. So let's take a breath in. As we breathe out, we're going to fold forward and make the sound of ah. Breathe in, come on back up, and we'll do that again. So take a deep breath in, shoulders down away from your ears. As we breathe out, fold forward and say ah. Inhale, come on back up. Let's do that again. This time we'll make the sound of E. So take a deep breath in. When you're ready, let's fold forward and make the sound of E. Inhale, come on back up. We'll do that one more time. Deep breath in. And a nice, long, slow breath out as we fold forward. E. Inhale. And come on back up. Now let's prepare our head, neck, and shoulders. We'll start by just turning our head from side to side. You want to do this very gently. Only go as far as is comfortable. Make sure you're breathing easily as you're doing the postures. So take a breath in. And as we breathe out, let's turn our head over to one side. Inhale back to center. And then breathe out as we look to the other side. Breathe in, back to center. We'll do that again. Breathe out to the other side. Inhale, back to center. Breathe out and look over our other shoulder. Breathe in and come back to center. Great. From here now, we can bring our shoulders up to our ears roll them back and bring them down. So we're opening up our chest. Again, shoulders up to our ears, roll them back and bring them down. Good. Let's take our hands, place our hands on our knees and let's turn our palms facing up. So hands go down and then palms go up. Hands go down and then palms Again, hands down, palms face up, and one more time, palms facing down, and then palms come up. Great. Let's now hold our elbows. Okay, so we're going to take a breath in here. We're going to make a window with our arms. So as we breathe in, let's raise our arms and raise them as high as is comfortable. So you can lean them against your forehead. So you can put your hands up over your head if that's possible. If you have any issues with your shoulders, only go as far as is comfortable. And breathe. Hold. 
arms come down. So while we're doing the poses, I'm counting in my head for a slow count of four. Let's do that again. Let's breathe in, arms come up, keep breathing. On our next breath out, let's bring our arms all the way back down. Great. Now we're going to do a little side opening pose. Okay, so we're gonna work on the muscles on the side of our body. So let's start by turning our palm up. One hand is down on the mat, the other hand, palm is facing up. We're going to scoop the air up and over our head. And then turn your hands and push the air back away. Let's do that again. Palm comes up, let's scoop the air up. And then turn your hands and push the air away. Great, let's do that to the other side. Palm comes up, going to scoop up, lift up, come up and over, feeling the whole stretch on the side of our body, and then turn your hands and push the air away. Again, palm up, scoop up, lift up, and then turn your hands and push the air away. Great. From here, we're going to do a seated spinal twist. So we're going to twist first to one side. We take our hand and bring it across to our opposite knee. Our other hand is behind our back. We take a breath in. And as we breathe out, we twist and look over that shoulder, only as far as is comfortable, and breathe. Inhale. Come on back to center. We'll do that to the other side. Let's cross our hand over. Our other hand comes back behind us. We take a breath in. And as we breathe out, we twist and look over that shoulder. Inhale. Come on back to center. Let's do that one more time. Let's take a breath in. Cross our hands up to our opposite knee as we breathe out. And turn and look over that shoulder. Inhale, back to center. And as we breathe out, let's twist over to the other side. And back to center. Now let's stretch our legs out in front of us. So I'll sit sideways so you can see me. And we're going to do a seated forward bend. You can bend your knees a little bit. Your knees are very tight. Or if it, you have limited movement here, you can bend. Your knees can be bent as much as they need to be. Okay, but it's important that you be sitting up on your sit bones. So let's reach your arms up. And as we breathe out, we're going to fold forward and reach for our toes. Look forward and breathe. Do that again. Reach your arms up and all the way up. And then as we breathe out, we're going to fold all the way over and breathe. Come on back up. From here, we're going to make our way onto our back. I'm going to face this way so I can see you all. And recline on my mat. We're going to start by bringing our knee up to our chest. So this knee to chest pose is really great for digestion and elimination. It helps to relieve the body of gas and any kind of digestive issue. It helps because it's, it's helping the ascending colon to move digestive foods um, through the body. Okay, so this is ascending. We always start with the right side. Let's bring our knee up to our chest, not out, but directly up. Toes are pointing up towards the ceiling. You can hold behind the child's knee or behind your knee, or you can hold two inches below your knee, okay? So let's take a breath in. And as we breathe out, we may notice that that knee comes a little bit closer to our chest. Take another breath here. A nice, long, slow breath out. Now, if you like and you're able, you can try to bring your nose to your knee, or if you're supported, and breathe. On our next exhale, we lower our head. We extend our leg all the way out. 
and we'll prepare to do this now, the left side. The left knee comes up, position your hands either below the knee or behind the knee. Toes are pointed towards the ceiling. So we're going to take a breath in. And as we breathe out, we're going to feel the muscle tension releasing a bit in our legs and perhaps getting a little bit closer to our chest. And breathe. On our next breath in, if we can, we can bring our nose to our knee. Otherwise, keep your head down on the floor, continue to breathe, stay in position. Next exhalation, head comes down to the mat, extend our legs all the way out, reach our arms up over our head, and let's just do a full body stretch. Feels really, really good. Now let's hug our knees into our chest. And let's do some hip circles. So we're just going to do some big circles with our knees, and this massages our hips and our lower back. Do a nice big circle, first in one direction, and then we'll go the other way. And back to center. From here, now we've got our knees up to our chest. We're going to drop our knees over to one side. We're keeping both shoulders down on the mat. So that might mean that our knees are still up in the air a bit. Both shoulders stay down on the mat, and we're going to extend our other arm out. So our knees are going one way, our head and our arms are going the other way, and we're twisting the center of our body. This is a very centering and organizing posture. And breathe. Inhale, come on back to center. Hug those knees. And we'll do that to the other side. So now our knees go in the opposite direction. We extend our arm out. We turn our hand and look at our arm. If that's too uncomfortable, we can look up at the ceiling and breathe. Very important that both shoulders are down on the mat, which may mean that our knees might be up in the air. And breathe. And come on back to center. Let's do one more circle with our legs. And from here, we're going to roll over onto our belly. If we're able, you know, if you're being too fast, if you have any devices or limitations physically that don't allow you to be on your belly, then you're going to stay on your back. And you're going to visualize doing this posture. So that means just close your eyes, listen to my voice, and imagine that you're doing this, okay? So we're going to point our toes. Our forehead is on the floor. Our hands are underneath our shoulders. And we're going to just lift our head very gently up off the floor. And I'll show you in a couple of minutes how you can assist with this posture. And breathe. Head comes down, turn your head to one side or the other, stretch your arms out, and breathe. We'll do that again. Hands under our shoulders. Head comes to center. Let's take a breath in. Lift our head up a little bit up off the floor. So we're working on head control, upper body control here. We're not pushing down into the mat. And breathe. When you're ready, bring your head back down to the mat, turn your head to the other side, stretch your arms out, and breathe. Now let's fold our heels, our feet, up towards our tush. We are not going to do this. We're going to do a modified bow pose here. So in bow pose, we reach back and grab our feet. We're just going to bring our feet towards our tush. And we're going to just hold this position. So breathe. In and out. Nice and slow and deep. And then if you like, we can do a windshield wiper with our feet. So we can drop our feet to one side and then to the other. Go over to one side and then go over to the other. Do that two more times.
and bring those legs down. Very good. From here, we're going to roll back over onto our back, and we're going to prepare for a few moments of deep relaxation. So I will guide you in this. Recline on your back, close your eyes. If you have a light blanket and you want to just cover yourself for a moment, it's great. Okay. And what we're going to do is bring our awareness to our feet, our toes, our ankles, our lower leg. Parents, if you'd like, if you're working with your child, you can put your hands on their feet, their lower legs, as we're doing this. Okay, give them a little massage to that area. And as you breathe in, you're going to breathe in relaxation. As you breathe out, you're going to release any tension that you're feeling in this whole lower part of your body. Now bring your awareness to your lower back. As you breathe in, feel your back stretching and opening. And as you breathe out, keep that openness. Feel your back connecting to the floor. On your next breath in, notice the front of your body. Notice your chest opening up and expanding. And as you breathe out, keep that space, keep that opening. Inhale that nice, fresh air. Bring your awareness now to your hands and your arms. Let's make a fist with both hands. Let's squeeze those hands if we can. Squeeze those hands up those arms. And then relax those hands, relax and release. And let your arms and hands just melt into the floor. Totally relaxing, releasing any tension that we're holding. Bring your awareness now to your throat. Swallow any excess saliva that's in your mouth. Let your mouth open slightly. Let your tongue come away from the roof of your mouth. Soften your lips. Relax your cheeks. Relax your eyebrows and the point between your eyes. Soften your forehead. Relax the top of your head, the sides of your head, and the back of your head. Relax each and every part of you. Continue to breathe nice and slow and deep, feeling this relaxation throughout your body. Now, when you're ready, I want you to give yourself a nice stretch in any way that feels comfortable and slowly come on up to sitting. So when you're ready, Kat, we can move on to the next slide. And before we conclude our practice, I just want to tell you a little bit about some of the poses that we did. All of our extension postures are energizing postures. They help to wake us up. They create energy and alertness. And they also help to open up our chest and our breathing space. We can do extension postures in sitting or reclined or in forward sitting. Um, so extension, we always include extension postures in our sequence, okay? They give us energy. On to our next slide where we'll talk about our flexion postures. So flexion postures, anytime we curl up, we bring our knees to our chest and sitting or in laying down, flexion postures are when we contract. And these postures are calming for the body. So we have a balance of calming and energizing. They also, many of our flexion postures, especially the ones we did today, promote digestion and elimination. They help the lower part of our body where we hold a lot of stress in our lower back. When we do our flexion postures, many of these poses help to relieve any stress or tension in our lower back. And many of our flexion postures help to prevent or reduce a flexion and extension posture, prevent or reduce contractures, keeping the body moving 
and we're preventing that stiffness or soft tissue adhesions that can happen when we don't move enough, okay? And then on to our next slide, where we'll talk about rotation postures. So anytime we do twists, twists into one side and then to the other, twists are organizing and they pull us together, okay? Twists help to get blood flow to our spinal column. And twists are very organizing in terms of our emotions and in terms of our physical body. They really help to pull us together, okay? To feel secure and safe in our bodies. So let's move on now to our next slide. And we're going to finish our practice with a circle of song. So our circle of song is a back and forth sing song. And I am going to sing, I will sing to you and you will sing back to me. So if one of my hosts would like to sing along with me, sing back to me, that would be great. So we'll sing for peace, joy, love and light. Okay, again, this is a great breathing exercise, vibrates the lungs, creates energy. So it's a great way to finish a practice. Okay, so peace, Oh, peace, oh, peace, 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 oh. Peace, oh, peace, oh, peace, oh, peace, oh. Peace, oh, peace, oh, peace, peace, oh. Peace, oh, peace, oh, peace, peace, oh. Peace, oh, peace, oh, peace, 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 oh. Peace, oh, peace, oh, peace, 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 oh. Peace, 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 oh. Peace, 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 oh. Peace, oh. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, 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 oh. Joy, oh, joy, oh, joy, 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 oh. Joy, oh, joy, oh, joy, 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 oh. Joy, oh, joy, oh, joy, joy, oh. Joy, oh, joy, oh, joy, joy, oh. Joy, oh, joy, oh, joy, 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 oh. Joy, oh, joy, oh, joy, 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 oh. Joy, 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 oh. Joy, 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 oh. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, 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 oh. Now, if you don't have the breath capacity to sing the whole song, you can also hum the back and forth. Okay? So let's just do a little wrap-up round. Peace, oh, peace, oh, peace, 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 oh. Peace, oh, peace, oh, pee, pee, peace, oh. Joy, oh, joy, oh, joy, joy, oh. Joy, oh, joy, oh, joy, joy, oh. Love, oh, love, oh, love, 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 oh. Love, oh, love, oh, love, 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 oh. Light, 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 oh. Light, 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 oh. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, oh. And now we complete our practice with a final spinal twist. So we'll twist first over to one side, looking over that shoulder. Come on back to center. We'll twist over to the other side, looking over that shoulder and back to center, and we'll complete our practice by bringing our hands behind our back or alongside our body, holding forward, feeling in the benefits of our practice, and wishing everyone a wonderful day. Or as we say in yoga, namaste. Namaste. So, we conclude, we completed our first practice. Now, I'd like to introduce you to Molly, my therapy doll, who's going to help demonstrate me assisting with some of the poses that I just showed you, okay? So let's 
let me just get my list and make sure we don't leave anything out. So first things first, we always want to start by calming ourselves, getting ourselves nice and centered. And I'm going to sit with Molly in my lap so that she can lean against me. Okay, so this is a nice position. If your child is bigger, you want to have them sit on the floor next to you with a support, perhaps back against the wall initially, um, or large bolster behind them. But you'll find the best way to support. You can work with your therapist to figure out the best way to support your child in an upright position. We will start by just doing a little warm up. Okay, so we can massage the hands, just as I showed you, round and round. Massage the palms and out to the fingers. And then we'll do the other hand. Circle the palm and out to the fingers. And you can do this for a few minutes. I'm going to just go through it a little bit quicker so that we can get to all of our moves. Okay? Now let's warm up the feet. So let's do some nice circles on the arches of the feet. Both feet. And then we can point those toes up to the nose and down to the floor. So toes up and toes down. Up and down. Good. All right, let's prepare for a little breathing exercise. So we'll do the sound of ah. I'm going to put my hands under the child's arms. We're going to lift our arms up over our head. And as we fold forward, we're going to make the sound of ah. Come on back up. Breathe in. We'll bring our arms down as we breathe out. Let's do that again. So take a breath in. Arms come up. As we breathe out, let's fold forward. And come all the way back up. Great. Arms come down alongside our body. Let's now do some gentle head turning. So I'm just going to put my hand on the child's cheek. And I'm going to guide them. They're not able to move, initiate movement of their head on their own. We'll turn our head first in one direction, come back to center, and then gently to the other side. Never force. Go as far as the child can comfortably move. We do a little bit each day. We can get a little bit more movement, flexibility as we move. Get some of the stiffness from side to side. Beautiful. Let's now place our hands on the child's shoulders. And we're going to, with our hands on the shoulders and upper arms, we're going to lift those shoulders up to the ears. Roll them back, opening up the chest and then bring them down. So let's take a breath in. Shoulders up to the ears. Roll them back. And as we breathe out, bring those shoulders down and arms alongside your body. Beautiful. Now let's cross our arms. So as I showed you earlier, holding on to the elbows. Okay? We're going to support the child's lower arms. Hands are in close to the body. We're going to take a breath in, and we're going to lift our arms up, 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 and breathe. Again, counting to four. If you feel that's too much, you can do it shorter. Do a count of two, perhaps. Again, let's do that again. Holding on to our elbows, let's take a breath in, and let's reach up. and arms come down. Now, we're going to stabilize the shoulder. So I'm gonna put my fingers up on the shoulder and we're going to lift the arm up close to the ear and lean over to one side. So we're stretching out all of our side muscles. And breathe. Always check your child, make sure they're smiling and comfortable. If you need to take a break, take it. Come on back up, go to the other side, okay? So always stabilize before you mobilize. Make sure your joints are well lined up. We're gonna bring that arm up close to the ear and we're going to lean over. One, two, three, four, 
three, four. We're stretching out all of our side muscles. Beautiful. And back to center. From here, we'll do a little seated spinal twist. So just as we did in our earlier practice, we're going to bring our hand across to our opposite knee. Okay, we can put our hands on the shoulders and we can just gently help our child to turn their upper body and look over the shoulder. And breathe. Come on back to center. And we'll do that to the other side. So let's cross our hand across. Other hand comes behind us. And we're just going to gently turn our upper body and look over our shoulder. Come on back to center. Typically, we repeat each pose two times. I'm going to just do the poses once for the sake of time. We've already done them independently. I'm going to demonstrate how to do them with support, okay? From here, we're going to stretch our legs out as far as is comfortable. We're going to help to support the child's arms by putting our hands under their forearms, okay? Their upper arms, I'm sorry, okay? So cup your hands close to the body, arms come up, we're going to take a breath in, and then we're going to fold forward. If the child has poor head control, you can put your hand on the child's forehead, or you can use a low bolster. This one is high. You can use a low bolster for the child to prop their head on as we go forward, okay? So just like this, the forehead would come onto the bolster. And breathe. Okay. And come on back up. Very good. All right. So from here, we will prepare to do some reclined postures. Let's get on our back. Slide down. Let's make sure our head is in good alignment. So we don't want our head to be hyperextended. We want our head to be even with the body. Okay. So whenever we're doing postures on our back, you may want to use a folded towel or a blanket. And let's begin with bringing our right knee up to our chest. So remember, we're right over here. It's opposite on our child. So let's bring that knee up close to the hip. Let's bring our hands across to the knee. And let's breathe and smile. One, two, three. Four, good, and let's stretch that leg all the way out. Let's repeat that to the other side. So let's bring our left knee up to our chest. Let's bring our hands across and help to support our hands on that knee. Let's breathe nice and slow and deep. This is level one, we're just going to work our legs, not bring our nose to our knee at this point. And breathe. And leg comes down. Beautiful. From here, we'll do a reclined spinal twist. So this is a nice rotation posture. Okay, as we said, this is a very centering posture. We're going to bring our knees up to our chest. And we're going to drop our knees over to one side, keeping our shoulders down on the mat and turning our heads to look the other way or straight up at the ceiling. Your arm is extended and breathe. Come on back to center. Let's stretch those legs out. And we'll repeat this to the other side. Okay? So let's bring our knees up to our chest. Let's drop our knees now over to the opposite side. Bring our shoulder down on the mat. And turning our head very gently if we can. And breathe. Come on back to center. Let's extend our arms and our legs and do a nice full body stretch. Go all the way up and all the way down. One more time, all the way up and all the way down. Beautiful. Okay, we can, if your child is able to be on their bellies, we can now roll over onto our belly and we'll prepare to do our low cobra pose. So what you want to do here is 
We're gonna make sure that airways are clear. Put your hands on your child's shoulders. Their arms are tucked in close to their body. Hands are right underneath the shoulders. We're just gonna pull down gently on the shoulders and see if the head will engage. Just to come up a little bit and breathe. If your child doesn't have any head control, you want to make sure that you have a thick therapy mat underneath your yoga mat, okay? And then slowly lower down, back down onto the mat. This is when you can practice with your therapist if they think that it's indicated for your child. Okay, now let's work on our lower body. So let's bend our knees, bring our heels towards our tush, and here we are in a modified bow pose. Breathe in, two, three, four. Now let's bring our arms alongside our body. We can reach back with our arms, reach back for our feet, and breathe. Now, I'm going to help the child to roll back over on their back, and we'll prepare for a few moments of deep relaxation. So during deep relaxation, we can give some massage, listening to our soothing music, and just relaxing after our yoga practice. Nice deep relaxation. So relaxing our feet, our legs, our belly, our back, our shoulders, our arms, our hands, Relaxing our neck, our jaw, our cheeks, our forehead, our eyes, and the top of our head. Relaxing our whole entire body. So we can float here for a moment or two, just listening to the music. And then when you're ready, we're going to help our child to get a nice big stretch in any way that's comfortable. You can come on back up to sitting. We'll complete the practice together with a final, final twist. So twisting first over to one side, looking over that shoulder, come on back to center. Let's twist over to the other side, looking over that shoulder, and back to center. And then Supporting the head, let's fold forward, feeling in the benefits of our practice and wishing each other a wonderful day or namaste. At this point, we would sing our circle of song again. I think you're versed in that now. So let's now move on to complete our program. So after yoga, um, you can do a small meditation. So a meditation for young children can be that they envision a color, their favorite color. And that color can begin to come into the room. So with their eyes closed, they imagine that all the walls in the room are being colored, that beautiful color. And the color comes down onto the floor, spreads across the floor, and then colors their shirt and pants the same color. This beautiful favorite color is making the whole room shine and be beautiful. Now that color goes up, 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 and covers the roof of the house. The color goes into the sky, and some of the clouds take on that color. The whole world is taking this color and spreading it all over the world. The favorite color is being shared by everyone. Let's keep our eyes closed for a minute and notice how beautiful the color is, how beautiful the color feels in our room, on our clothes, and out in our world. Let's take a couple of breaths. And then let's open our eyes and come back now into the here and now, into this room. The colors have gone away for now, but we can bring them back during another meditation. 
So meditation is when we look within. We use guided imagery often with young children. There's lots of different meditations for children that we can use. It's a great way to round up round out our practice and bring our focus and our attention inward. Okay. So Kat, let's move on to our next slide. So our summary, the benefits of yoga for SMA, and I've been taught this by working personally with a young man um, who has SMA from the time he was four years old and he Yoga is still the favorite part of his day. He's in college. So number one, it feels good. It feels good. It helps to improve our circulation and oxygenated blood flow. It strengthens our digestion and elimination. So it makes digestion of food and elimination of waste much easier. It helps to improve our energy and our endurance, our physical capacity. It has a positive impact on mood and self-regulation. So we're able to maintain a calm state. Sometimes, you know, especially if you fatigue easily, it's, you may be a little bit more irritable. But when you do your yoga practice, it gives you energy and it also helps you to have a good mood. And last but not least, enhanced immune function. So really the the body's ability to fight off disease is strengthened when you do a yoga practice. And I saw this firsthand with my friend who had frequent pneumonia before he began to do yoga and has not had pneumonia since. So we're talking about 15 years now. So that's very, very positive. Okay, so on to our next slide. Okay, first a special thanks to, to my teacher, Sadie, and to Sonia Sumar, who created the Yoga for the Special Child program. You may want to buy or look at Sonia's book, Yoga for the Special Child, and you will see some adapted poses. The first level poses are adapted poses that some of whom were replicated in our practice today, but always work with a therapist if you want to introduce any other poses into your yoga session in the morning. Okay, um, you can reach me on the next slide. My name is Ann Buckley Reen, and my email is 4kidsot at aol.com. I run a program for children with all levels of ability for New York City schools. It is a daily yoga program that we began 12 years ago and has um, created quite a large number of very happy adults and children with all sorts of challenges and abilities. So I want to thank everyone for being here today and for thank your SMA for having me share yoga with you. And I think we have time for a couple of questions. Okay. Thank you so much, Anne. That was such an informative and very relaxing presentation. Hi, everyone. This is Sarah with the Cure SMA Family Support Department. And as a reminder, um, please reach out to family support at curesma.org or directly to Anne with the email she provided with any questions you might have about yoga for children with SMA. We do have time for one quick question that came in. Um, were any of the poses that you showed or do you have any other suggestions for um, like tight hip flexors and stretching your hip flexors? So, um, so basically the, the hip circles that we did, that's a great warm up for the hip flexors. So you bring the hips up to the chest and then you just do some slow circles followed by extending the legs all the way out. You can hold on to the heels and give a nice stretch out. So knees up to the chest, do some nice circles. I would have the child on their back for this. And then I would follow that by an extension posture, okay? Stretching the legs all the way out. Nice and slow and deep. Right? Perfect. That's where I would begin. Thank you so much again, Anne. We would now like thank to introduce. You. Oh, <laughs> thank you again. Um, so we would now like to do, to introduce 
Amy Nicole Nayar, representing Novartis Gene Therapies, who will be sharing their presentation on the impact of newborn screening. Amy Nicole? Hi, everyone. Um, you know, as a registered yoga teacher myself, I'm so happy to be a part of this particular summit of strength, focusing on holistic wellness. And thank you, Anne, for that useful, calming, and centering uh, session that we just had. It was it was amazing. Um, thanks, thanks for doing this together. It's been wonderful. Um, today, I am here to uh, to share a new announcement from Avexis to talk about the importance of the patient voice when it comes to newborn screening, to provide some information on Zolgensma, and to share a video, um, which I think you will love, uh, focusing on one family and their experience with newborn screening. So I have a few logistical notes uh, to begin. Uh, this is a presentation for US residents. Um, the indication and important safety information for Zolgensma uh, will be covered in the presentation and you can view the full prescribing information available uh, here today and at Zolgensma.com. So we can go to the next slide. And um, I'd like to start with, uh, actually a bit, we'll go to the next slide after this too. And uh, we can start just by sharing that Avexis, um, which has been a part of Novartis since 2018, has recently uh, changed our name. We will be uh, Novartis Gene Therapies. You'll see over the next few months as we transition some of our materials, you'll still see Avexis for a while, and then you'll see Novartis Gene Therapies. Um, but we're really excited. This is really a new unit um, dedicated to developing AAB-based gene therapies. And while the name of our organization is changing, our commitment to uh, the community remains steadfast. So you can find out more information about that on our website. We're, of course, proud to be a continued uh, member of the SMA community. And um, we are, you know, we're, we're happy to, to talk here today about our groundbreaking uh, therapy, um, Zolgensma, which is approved in the US. Europe and Japan, as well as Brazil, and currently pursuing um, uh, approval and registration in other countries. Um, we are, as you know, uh, currently we have a clinical study called the STRONG study. It is for intrathecal administration of Zolgensma, and that's currently on hold. We are uh, looking in the STRONG study at patients with three copies of the SMN2 gene, who are between the ages of six months and five years old and we're working to provide the, the community with timely updates as that progresses. Um, you can always visit the research and development page on avexis.com for an overview of our broad clinical development program across all types of SMA. Um, the progress in gene therapy for SMA, uh, we can all feel good about. It's helping to lead the way for gene therapy and other diseases, including those in avexis's pipeline for Rett syndrome, for amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, or ALS, SOD1, as well as Friedrich's ataxia. And Avexis is also lending its gene therapy technology and manufacturing expertise to help a uh, gene-based COVID-19 vaccine. And that's in clinical trials uh, led by Massachusetts Eye and Ear and Massachusetts General Hospital. You can go to the next slide. With just a quick summary of uh, some of the, the ways that we are so proud to partner with Kira SMA, and I know several of you are familiar with that, so we can go to the next slide and spend our time talking about newborn screening. In SMA, we know that time is motor neurons, and that's why newborn screening is such an important tool in the fight against SMA. An early diagnosis of SMA gives the child an opportunity to receive treatment earlier, which may provide a better chance at reaching important motor milestones. And currently, as this map shows, there are 32 states that are screening for SMA and 18 do not. Would you please move to the next slide, Kat? So on the right-hand side, you can see the 18 that do not. And this is really where, um, where we have uh, an opportunity to advocate. So please do consider um, becoming active in this space uh, and continuing your efforts, if you are already, to spread the word, to get involved, and use the easy tools that are found on the CureSMA Advocacy Action Center. 
You can download the fact sheets that are there for each state. Uh, you can work with the personalized templated letters that are available, um, make a phone call, send an email, or schedule an in-person meeting with, um, with the regulators and the decision makers who are really impacting this for families. And in this way, we can together make an impact for the families um, uh, who are, are not yet diagnosed, but may be diagnosed in the future. It's a way that we can give to the broader community. Please consider also sharing a testimony of your own SMA experience and discuss how it's impacted your family. We can move to the next slide. So we're committed to sharing the stories of families whose lives have been impacted by SMA and the difference that newborn screening can make. So this month we're working with all members of the community to really raise the awareness for newborn screening. And I know that you've, you've likely participated in and, and been a part of this throughout. This slide lists some of the things that, that we're doing to contribute to that as well. Um, you can see, I think probably of most interest are those new videos on zolgensma.com highlighting the families whose lives have been impacted by newborn screening. Please move to the next slide, Kat. So a little bit about Zolgensma. Um, some of you uh, are likely familiar, but Zolgensma is an FDA approved prescription gene therapy used to treat children less than two years old with SMA. It's a one-time infusion given intravenously and it's an infusion that takes about 60 minutes. It is not evaluated in patients with advanced SMA, and examples of advanced SMA include complete paralysis of limbs or permanent ventilator dependence. Zolgensma has no SMA type or copy number restriction. Age is the restriction under two years. For concerns uh, in the COVID-19 pandemic, Caregivers should talk to their child's doctor and determine if the treatment centers are safe for their child to receive Zolgensma. It's important to note that the need for treatment is urgent and shouldn't be delayed. We can go to the next slide, please, Kat. So more important information about Zolgensma. Zolgensma can cause acute liver injury. Liver enzymes should be, could become elevated and may reflect acute liver injury in children who receive Zolgensma. This can be serious. Patients who receive an oral, will receive an oral corticosteroid before and after infusion with Zolgensma and will undergo a regular blood test to monitor liver function. Please contact the, do, the patient's doctor immediately if the patient's skin or the whites of the eyes appear yellowish or if the patient misses a dose of the corticosteroid or vomits it up. Viral respiratory infections before or after Zolgensma infusion can lead to more serious complications. Contact the patient's doctor immediately if you see possible signs of a respiratory infection, such as coughing, wheezing, sneezing, runny nose, sore throat, or fever. Decreased platelet counts could occur following infusion with Zolgensma. Seek immediate medical attention if a patient experiences unexpected bleeding or bruising. Please move to the next slide, Kat. So what do you need to know about vaccinations? Please talk to the patient's doctor and decide if adjustments to the vaccination schedule are needed to accommodate treatment with corticosteroid. Protection against RSV is recommended. Temporarily, small amounts of Zolgensma might be found in the patient's stool. Please use good hand hygiene when coming into contact with bodily waste for one month after infusion with Zolgensma. Disposable diapers should be sealed in disposable trash bags and thrown away with the regular trash. Most common side effects occurred in patients treated with Zolgensma are elevated liver enzymes and vomiting. The safety information provided here is not comprehensive. Please talk to the patient's doctor about any side effects that bother the patient or don't go away. You're encouraged to report any suspected side effects by contacting the FDA or Avexis at the numbers below. Please see the full prescribing information here today and at zolgensma.com. There are also two attachments to this. The Zolgensma PI as well as the Colorado WAC form are available in the handout section. You can go to the next slide. And now we would like to share one family story about newborn screening and how it affected their journey with SMA treatment and treatment with Zolgensma. 
because Eden was born in a state that had SMA on the newborn screening panel, his family was able to get a diagnosis and take the necessary actions to get him treated with Zolgensma before he showed symptoms. Remember, this is only one family's experience and each child is different. Kat, please play the intro and the video. Meet Rory and Carolyn. They first met in seminary and after falling in love and getting married, they moved to North Dakota for work. They decided to hold off on starting their family while they settled into their first jobs in North Dakota. And just a few years later, they moved to Minnesota where Rory accepted a new job as a minister and Carolyn enrolled in a hospital chaplain residency program. Little did they know how important that decision would become for their future family. At the time, neither North Dakota nor Minnesota had spinal muscular atrophy, SMA, on their newborn screening panel. In March 2018, Minnesota adopted and implemented newborn screening for SMA. And a few months later, Rory and Carolyn's only son, Eden, was born. Five days after his birth, Rory and Carolyn received a devastating phone call. Eden's newborn screening results revealed he most likely has SMA. They were already scheduled to see their pediatrician concerning Eden's low weight, and when they shared the news of SMA, she recommended they immediately see a pediatric neurologist. Fortunately, Rory and Carolyn were able to get an appointment with a pediatric neurologist who had a lot of experience in SMA just four days after they received their newborn screening test results. The pediatric neurologist explained SMA in great detail, outlined an FDA-approved treatment option, and emphasized the need to treat immediately. Rory and Carolyn did just that, scheduling Eden for the first round of that treatment when he was only two weeks old. Between their second and third visits for treatment, however, Rory received a phone call from the pediatric neurologist that changed the direction of Eden's treatment. He shared information about investigational gene therapy and clinical studies, which Carolyn was already familiar with from doing research after Eden's diagnosis. That treatment would go on to gain FDA approval and become known as Zolgensma on the Semnogene Abaparovec XIOI. The pediatric neurologist explained that Zolgensma is a one-time dose that targets the genetic root cause of SMA by replacing the function of the non-working gene. Rory and Carolyn were drawn to the science of how Zolgensma works and that it was a one-time only treatment and felt encouraged by the preliminary study results. Although Eden did not qualify for the clinical study, the pediatric neurologist raised the possibility that he might qualify for the treatment through the Avexis U.S. Managed Access Program, or MAP. To his parents' excitement, Eden qualified for MAP and received the investigational gene therapy treatment in 2019 when he was about three months old. These days, Eden is doing very well, but I'll leave the updates about his progress to the people who know him best. Hello, everybody. I'm Rory. Hi, I'm Carolyn. And this is Eden. And Eden is 22 months old today, and... Today? When he was three months old, he <laughs> was dosed with a Vexus 101, now called Zolgensma. And we wanted to show off a few of the things that he can do. So we've got a few videos, uh, home videos shot for you that we want to show you. And here they are. Peekaboo! Eden, are you hiding? Where's Eden? Peekaboo! Yeah. Are you going to climb back up this way? You're going to step off. Good job. All right, give it a go. Push. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Push, 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 push. Today he's using two spoons. Isn't that right, buddy? Good job, Eden, coming across the balance beam. Look at that. Down. Yay! All right, everybody. Thanks for watching with us, and we'll see you later. Bye. Say bye, Eden. <laughs> <laughs> So since Eden's diagnosis uh, and treatment, Corey and Rory and Carolyn have made advocacy an important part of their life's work. 
fighting to get SMA on the newborn screening panel in all 50 states. In Wisconsin, we know that Carolyn wrote letters and made phone calls until she secured a meeting with the governor to advocate for adding SMA to the state's newborn screening panel. We know that Rory has been in contact with legislators in his home state of Nebraska. And if you have a similar passion for patients, we encourage you to get involved through the CureSMA.org advocacy site. To see more videos uh, and more children who've been treated with Zolgensma, please visit Zolgensma.com family videos to follow their journeys. We can go to the next slide. And just a note to say thank you for all you do as part of the SMA community. And we're so happy to be a part of it as well. Over to you, Jessica. Great. Thank you so much, Amy, Nicole, and, and thank you again to both of our, our wonderful speakers today for their time and interactive presentations. We appreciate everyone who joined in on today's webinar. You will be receiving a follow-up email with the survey link, and we welcome any feedback that you have to share. We are incredibly, incredibly grateful for the support from our sponsors for making the Summit of Strength virtual webinar series possible. Please visit the CureSMA website to view any upcoming Summit of Strength webinars. And if there's anything that we can do for you and your family or any questions we can help answer, please email us at familysupport at curesma.org. Thank you again and have a great day.